Hey everyone, today I'm going to do a little uh, video about uh, educating people about God as opposed to actually having Him. Um, and this is for true born again Christians who actually know and experience the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, before I go on, I want to say that young Christians do not have an understanding of the things that I'm about to talk about because they haven't grown into, um, grown to the point where they understand uh, where God is actually dropping something into their spirit as opposed and hearing the Lord as opposed to not being here hearing the Lord. A lot of people don't understand this. And one of the biggest reasons they don't understand this is because the church tries to educate people in the things of God. You cannot educate people in the things of God and actually have God. There's a difference between believing about the Lord Jesus Christ, believing, going to seminary, being taught proper doctrines, believing about it is not the same about as having it. You either have it or you do not. We do not choose the Lord. The Lord God chooses us for people that are truly His. And this is the problem that I've seen in my life why a lot of people cannot grasp the things that I'm talking about. And I've been told, I was just talking to a brother about this, and, and one of the first things he says is to keep your mouth shut because the people who do not have the Lord, the religious about God, rags, um, they think they can go to seminary, study their Bible, and uh, come to an intellectual understanding of the Lord, and therefore they are Christians, they are spiritual authorities. But it has nothing to do with the Western mind um, <clears throat> coming to proper doctrines and proper theology about the Lord Jesus Christ. It is simply actually walking in and having the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ only speaks to his people. We don't educate the wicked. And the wicked I'm talking about are the people that do not actually have the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't care how much head knowledge you have about the Bible, how much you understand, uh, or how much you think you understand about the things of God. It's not a uh, uh, four-brained conclusion. It's not a competition like us good capitalists have, of I will put myself on top of the mountain, I will be above other people because I know so much more than they do. And this is what happens with churchmen. They say, well, what kind of education do you have? What do you know? How long have you studied? What, how much experience do you have? I am a spiritual authority. That's nonsense. Because spiritual authority, true spiritual authority, only comes for those who actually know and move in the things of God. God chooses his spiritual authority. God drops in to people's spirit what he wants them to know. God is the one who shows people uh, their, um, their shortfalls and the, their lack of understanding and enlightens them with the truth of God. But this is only for people that God has chosen to do a work in. You cannot build a seminary, teach people about the things of God, and therefore say you're a spiritual authority and you are an elder and uh, you're in the position to uh, straighten other folks out. Because this is what the church has done, but this is not how the Lord Jesus Christ works. The Lord Jesus Christ works in his people individually and shows them things, reveals things to them. And what I've made the mistake of doing is trying to share the things of God, the spiritual deeper truths of God that I've experienced in my life, and I found that they have no idea what I'm talking about, and that's simply because they don't have it. Now, again, I'm not talking about young Christians that uh, are limited in understanding and growth, uh, and it has nothing to do with their intellectual ability, how smart they are, or how stupid they are. It has not, nothing to do with how well they talk, or how well they don't talk. It has nothing to do with how they phrase things, or they don't phrase things. 
It has nothing to do with education, status, or anything. It simply has to do with abiding in the Lord Jesus Christ and being able to hear the Lord Jesus Christ. And we cannot force ourselves to do this. We cannot force ourselves to learn how to be Christians. And this is the great mistake that the church has made. Now, it's been <clears throat> helpful for the Christian-informed nations of the past to honor the Lord and honor the Lord's commandments, the law of God um, in the Bible. This is why, for instance, the United States has been so blessed. But it doesn't make people an actual Christian just because they believe in something. It doesn't ma make you an actual Christian because you believe in something. Again, I'm repeating myself. You know, believe and accept and commit. We can all come to Jesus if we simply believe, accept, and commit our way unto the Lord. And this is this is the thing that uh, that I'm starting to understand is a false truth. It's a counterfeit to actually moving in and having the Lord Jesus Christ. If we have been chosen of God, elect towards God, towards salvation, and he's given us that chance, and we've repented and changed our mind and accept Jesus Christ into our heart, if we've truly done that and he's entered into our hearts, then we have a choice to make. Are we going to continue to follow him and move in the things of God? Or are we just going to and be in, de, in dependency upon the Lord Jesus Christ? Because if we truly have him, or are we going to become independent of God and try to do it ourselves? And this is what a lot of people do, unfortunately. This is what the majority of people that call themselves Christians do, unfortunately. And I've never understood this. I've never understood why I could speak about the things of God that has personally happened and he's personally revealed to me. Uh, one time I, uh, when I was dating my wife, I nearly drowned off the uh, coast of Ocean City. And uh, when the Lord was speaking to me personally because I am his and because he has started to do a work in me, sanctification they call it, regeneration, you know, well, just because you know of these things doesn't mean you actually have these things. I'm sorry. But um, anyway, to go on with my story, I experienced years later sort of a um, being trapped in the surf, smelling the salt water, experiencing that again, and having the Lord say to me, you can do nothing except present to people the gospel. This is when I was praying about uh, my wife's salvation and leading my wife into all truth. Now, even this was something that God did. I had nothing to do with it. All I could do is hold out the gospel, the experience of the Lord Jesus Christ that I knew and present it to her. And But it was God that decided to do a work in her which decided to um, uh, allow her to um, accept the things that I was expressing to her. If I went into most of your church uh, buildings, s stood up behind the podium and preached these, uh, then preached this kind of uh, experience in the Lord, it would surely tickle people's ears, but the, that would be casting pearls before swine because if they do not have it, if they have not experienced the true spiritual move of the Holy Spirit within them, they really have no idea what I'm talking about. Even if I was skilled enough to conceptualize, to be able to explain to them uh, what it is like to have the Holy Spirit move in you, um, it wouldn't do any good simply because uh, they, they, uh, they don't have it. They don't have it, and this is what the this is what the church does. It tries to instruct people and teach people about the Bible, teach people about things of God. But the bottom line is, you are either in Him or you are not, and this has nothing to do with men's efforts. I'm sorry, and this is why I'm learning more and more 
that I can only speak with true brethren that actually have Christ in them, in power, such as I do. And unfortunately, I'm finding even in so-called ministry that most people may talk a good show, but they have never experienced the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm terribly sorry, but you cannot learn these things through the mind, through memorizing scripture, through knowing your Bible. I don't care how much head knowledge you can pack and how much good doctrinal understanding you can pack into your head. It has nothing to do with the mind. It only has to do with the Lord and the people the Lord chooses to work, do a work in. And anything else is simply casting your pearls before swine, pigs, vipers. And most ministers, just like the Pharisees, they want to be a type of Christ. They want to be in spiritual authority. They want people to come to them to ask them for direction in their lives instead of pointing people to Christ. Well, you have to go to the Lord and ask the Lord to show you. I cannot. The best I can do is say, the grass is good to eat over in this position, like the pastor's heart vision I had. All I can say is, well, I've been there. I've experienced this. Uh, was it like this or was it like that? You know, what, uh, what, what, how did the Lord speak to you? And the best I can do is fellowship with them if we have the same thing. It doesn't have to do with how much head knowledge I have. Or, and how much intellectual understanding I have. The only thing an elder has to do with is how much truly spiritual understanding they have, how much maturity in Christ they have. But the problem is, a lot of people who claim his name do not have Jesus Christ living within them. They know about him, but knowing about him is not the same as having him. God bless everybody. Bye-bye.